My wife and I have been married for seven years. We don't have any children. She did, however, begin a new job two years ago and has been very successful since then. She mentioned a man she works with, but she said on several occasions that he was a jerk and she didn't like working with him. She has softened somewhat since then and rarely mentions him. I didn't think I had anything to be concerned about. I've always had faith in myself. And while our marriage isn't perfect, I thought we got along rather well. Fast forward to approximately a month ago, when I began to notice some behavioral changes. She was messaging a lot more and never left her phone alone. She seemed to have more going on at night, and on weekends she grew chilly to me, refusing to return any affection. She also lied to me about unusual things multiple times. The most recent deception occurred as she was packing for a work trip, and I saw she had bought a new, much more revealing bathing suit than anything I'd ever seen her wear. When I asked her about it, she claimed she ordered it online, which was false, and that after trying it on, she realized it wasn't appropriate for a business trip to Florida with her co-workers. She then left for the excursion, taking the swimming suit with her. While she was gone, I decided to conduct some research. I had never gone through my wife's belongings in our whole relationship, but I had had enough of all the lies in one of her work bags. On hotel paper, I found a drawing of her that closely resembled a caricature. I also discovered a post-it note in her hand with driving directions to her male co-worker's residence scrawled on it. I searched over our bank statements and discovered that many times, while she was supposed to be at work, she was out at various restaurants throughout the city. This piqued my interest enough for me to look into it more. I'm a private investigator by trade, and I have no problem invading someone's privacy ethically. I implanted a GPS tracker in her after developing a reasonable suspicion of misconduct. Because the title is in my name, it is legal in my state. She informed me she was going to work at a coffee shop and run some errands the Sunday after she returned from her trip. Her automobile never reached within a mile of a Chipotle, but when she got home, she walked in with a Chipotle cup in her hand and confirmed she had eaten there. The next Tuesday, she informed me that she needed to accompany supper and would be working late until dinner. The GPS showed her leaving work at 3.20 p.m. and heading to the restaurant, where her car remained until 9 o'clock p.m. that night. The final straw came the following Saturday. We were going to go watch my niece play tennis at 8 a.m. She stated that she wished to drive separately in order to leave the venue and work a coffee shop. She told me after the match that she was going to a former coffee shop and gave me a few details about why she wanted to go there. I said good morning and went to my eye watched on the GPS as she drove straight to a Comfort Inn motel. I arrived at the Comfort Inn and waited in a nearby parking lot until I could establish that she was in the facility and not in her car. I called her from the foyer and inquired about X coffee shop. She thought it was good. Why? The only other thing I said was, come down here so we can finish this. When she arrived, she explained, it's not what you think. He has to do this because he's been caught with other girls before. I inquired as to what she was referring to, and she stated that he is usually working in hotel rooms. When she said they didn't do anything physical, I instructed her to get out of my car. She called me 50 times as I drove away. I finally answered and informed her that if she gave me one more lie, I'd hang up. She claimed that they kissed once, around five months ago, but that it was an accident and meant nothing. She stated once more that they were simply working, I inquired how many times she had met him in hotels in the previous nine months, and she responded roughly ten. I then inquired as to what she did on that Tuesday. She got protective as a result. She stated that she had been at work all day until her work supper. I hung up the phone after calling her a liar. She arrived at our house just as I was loading my car with my possessions and my dog. She remained in the driveway refusing to move until I approached her. She was in fits of laughter, crying, and apologizing. 
I left on that day and have been away ever since. We met a couple times so she could try to explain things. When it's my turn to ask questions, she becomes irritated and defensive and says things like answering these questions is bad for the relationship. Even insignificant details mislead her. I've confronted her with her lies and she accuses me of trapping her by asking questions to which I already know the answers. Throughout it all, she has maintained that this was not a romantic relationship. She stated that she became good friends with this man and that he assisted her in her profession. She stated that when they discussed our marital problems, their chats became inappropriate. She acknowledged messaging him and then deleted the message, claiming that they weren't amorous, but may be interpreted as flirting. She stated that she had been depressed for a long period and he was excellent at talking her out of it and encouraging her in her work. Although I am aware that I am being deceived, a part of me still believes her. Maybe I want to believe her because I love her, or maybe I'm terrified of the truth. I'm very interested in discovering the truth, but the problem is that I don't see how I can get past the facts that I do know. So what's the point? I inquired whether she had spoken with the individual in the previous four weeks. She stated that he was unaware that I arrived at the hotel on my own, and someone called her out. She also stated that she has not discussed the topic with him because it is a problem in our marriage and does not include him. I inquired if she had discontinued all non-work-related contact with him. She stated that she was cutting back, getting thinner. I blew it. She stated she feels compelled to tape her down rather than avoid contact because he has no idea. She then lied about an insignificant fact. I confronted her about it and I was certain she was lying. She rejected it to the point of shrieking and refused to back down. I ignored it, dismissing it as yet another unresolved issue. In this scenario, when she informed me that she was ceasing social contact with the other man, I set up a voice recorder in my house and left. My recorder died in the afternoon, so I examined the tape last night and discovered my wife and this other man had spent well over an hour on the phone with each other over the course of at least two phone calls. I'm guessing they talked again in the evening. If not, I didn't hear many details from the phone call, but I did hear a few concerning things. They talked for a long time about the current situation of our marriage, which she said he was unaware of. They discussed how to use the secret phone app on their phones to avoid detection. The moment I arrived late for breakfast that morning, she referred to me as a jackass, and the two of them laughed about a million additional topics. I haven't heard my wife so excited in a long time. When I challenged her about it all, she admitted to some of it but denied others. I'm not sure I care anymore. I have had no contact with my wife for the past two weeks. She texted me a few days ago and asked if we could talk. I informed her that until she was willing to admit everything, I would not. She then stated that she is aware that I have wiretapped her phone and that I already know everything. I told her I needed to hear it directly from her. Finally, she consented to sit down with me and tell me everything. She came to my house and admitted that her relationship with the other man was sexual and had been going on for six months. She revealed that she booked a hotel room for us one day before our anniversary. She also stated that she had continued to speak with him after being apprehended and that he was assisting her in dealing with my questions. She claims she has finally broken up with the other man and wants to work on our marriage. Six agonizing weeks after I caught her in the hotel, she confessed. I suppose she only confessed because of my perseverance. She did say, however, that she was always intending to tell me but she wanted to make sure it didn't harm either of us too much. The harm inflicted during those six weeks is insurmountable. First and foremost, if you find yourself in this circumstance and are considering suicide, do not do so. I advise you not to do it because you'll miss out on the best moment of your life if you do. That is completely true. Sincerely, I know it's difficult to see when you're first starting down this path, but don't miss out on this life. Now for the latest news, we divorced. I deliberated for a long time before making that decision. 
I wish I hadn't wasted that time, but who cares? For what reason did she wish to stay together? I have no idea. For an hour, she lied and gaslighted me. That effectively killed any chance of reconciliation. It's the most difficult thing I've ever gone through in my marriage. I was completely committed. I wasn't perfect, but I adored my wife and desired to remain with her forever. I would have done anything to please her, and I believe I did in countless instances. Now that I'm no longer in that relationship, I can recognize it for what it was. A narcissist draining every ounce of energy from a fine person. The marriage was completely one-sided, with one person giving everything and the other taking far more than the marriage could sustain. As a partner, I honestly believed I was worthless. She slandered my career, my personality, and my character. My career has thrived since my divorce, and I've been able to date women that I would have thought were completely out of my league. I used to think I was ugly, partly because of how my ex-wife made me feel, but now gorgeous women much younger than me approach me in bars. I've had a few beautiful relationships with wonderful women. They parted amicably due to their general compatibility. However, it revealed how bad of a partner my ex-wife was. I'm no longer in contact with the ex. I don't think about her very often, but this divorce became difficult because she thought I was collecting too much money. Even though I was taking less than 50%, since I wanted the divorce to move quickly without disrupting businesses and retirements. Could you imagine? Cheating on someone and then complaining about the amount of money they're taking, even if it's less than half. That drove home to me the importance of making the correct decision and getting away from this filth as soon as possible. I lost friends as a result of the divorce. The majority of good riders sided with me, but I don't care about those who didn't. They made it simple for me to get rid of them. My in-laws passed away. This is one of the most difficult portions. Some of these were quite appealing to me. I'm certain because I sent numerous emails to the affair partner's wife. She knows she never responded, and I'll respect her decision. Some words of wisdom separate yourself from the scenario if you are still in it. This is the only way you'll be able to think rationally without being gaslighted. Seek expert assistance. I spent a long period in treatment. It is beneficial. Because of this, I'm a lot stronger now. As much as possible, surround oneself with friends and family. Make healthy decisions. Visit the gym. Limit your use of drugs and alcohol. Get out of the house and try to sleep. Take counsel from others, but draw your own conclusions. This is your life. After Discovery Day, there were some very difficult days, but after the first heartbreak, it has been the finest time of my life. Every day brings me joy. If you're going through something like this and need some help from a self-proclaimed expert, hit. Your tale should be used as an example as soon as possible. After going through a circumstance like this, life can improve. It will take some time, but as your life begins to improve, you will be able to move on. You indicated that your wife is no longer on your mind, indicating that you have fully moved on in terms of the friends you lost along the way. They were never your friends to begin with. True friends will stand by you, even during difficult times like the one you experienced. I wish you the best opportunity and hope that your life continues to flourish with greatness.